So today we are going to address a very pressing question in the Lunchbox Science community, one that was in fact posed in our very first episode. Why do ducks float? Also, this video is being filmed on my brand spanking new beautiful camera that amazing viewers like you helped make happen. So stay tuned till the end of the video to find out about fun prizes for you and a big thank you from me. Cool, thanks, bye. So here are the three main things that keep ducks afloat. Number one, the uropygial gland. This is a gland that produces oil and it's located at the base of a duck's tail. And ducks use their bills to reach around, grab some oil, and spread it all over their feathers. This oil makes the feathers water resistant, so they repel water, which means they never get saturated by water, so they stay really light. If a duck's feathers were saturated by water, they would get really heavy, and all of the ducks would be basically dragged down to the bottom of the lake by the weight of their own feathers. Not a good time. So, hooray for the uropygial gland. On a related note, duck feathers in general are structured so that they trap air between the layers of feathers. This is really important because not only does it keep them afloat, sort of like a water floaty device in a pool, but it also keeps them warm during the winter. Actually, all birds have some version of this mechanism, which is why in the winter they fluff themselves up and put more air in between the layers of their feathers. And they look like they're wearing little bird parkas, and it just makes me really happy. Okay, number two. Birds have a completely different respiratory system from mammals. Instead of having a set of two lungs, they have a series of air sacs that act as the lungs that work really efficiently to help them breathe properly when they're swimming or flying. Water birds like ducks can fill some of these sacs with air and keep it there to help them float, and they can expel that air when they like to dive down to get some nibbles at the bottom of the pond. And number three. Ducks, like all birds, have hollow bones, which makes them lighter and helps keep them afloat and helps keep them in the air. I can imagine that holding yourself up for hours at a time with your species' version of arms would be very tiring, so evolution made a really good call on that one. Well, technically, bird bones aren't actually hollow. They're what scientists call pneumatized, which means that they're made up of an internal network of crisscrossing bones surrounded by pockets of air. So overall, there's much less mass of bone, but they're still internally, structurally strong and resistant to breakage. So there you have it, the three reasons ducks float. Number one, oil covered in air-packed feathers. Number two, a helpful air sac respiratory system. And number three, hollow bones. Essential information for any trivial fact seeker, and hopefully it put your mind at ease. I know everybody was really anxious to know that, so now we do. Okay, as promised, this is the end of the video where I thank all of the incredible donors who donated to the campaign and made this beautiful camera possible. Thank you so, so, so much. As a small token of my appreciation, I have ordered these exclusive Lunchbox Science stickers, my friends. Everybody who donated and felt comfortable giving me their address uh, will receive one of these. Even if you didn't donate and you still want one, I would love for you to have one. So go over and find me on Twitter or Facebook or Tumblr and message me your address. I promise not to use it for any nefarious purposes. They would look great in your locker or on a binder or in the window of your car or wherever you want to put it. So thank you so much for supporting. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for a video on exercise. Don't forget to pack your lunchbox. Okay, bye!